Prenatal nutrition is the first step to creating happy and beautiful families. Most, if not all, modern ailments are environment related. The two main factors being improper diet and radiation exposure from modern technology. Without proper vitamins, minerals, and fatty acids, the various organs, tissues, bones in your body will never reach full potential. Combine that with the oxidative stress from a high radiation environment, you have children whose bodies are fighting to survive as opposed to focusing on growing. And in all of our past families, ancestry, indigenous groups, there are traditional feeding methods for the couples trying to conceive. They would consume high quality, nutritious animal foods for a year or two before having the child to ensure the health of the sperm and the egg. And then the woman would continue those high quality nutritious foods while she was breastfeeding for anywhere from two to five years. And then the child would hopefully be in an environment with ample animal nutrition. And these are going to be five foods that will ensure you have a healthy baby. You know, the sooner you start, the better. As I mentioned, ideally a year or two before conceiving. To briefly summarize our focuses, we want lots of animal foods for B vitamins, some fresh foods for vitamin C, plenty of sunlight and fermented foods to balance fat soluble vitamins, both high quality animal and plant foods for our mineral needs, and of course, some source of omega fatty acids. And there are certainly plant foods that you want to incorporate into a pregnancy diet, and maybe one or two of them could sneak into a top 10 list, but animal foods have so much nutrition that you know, even if you're consuming something like chocolate for magnesium, it just doesn't compare to 10, 15, 20 other needs. So these top five foods are in order of importance, but all of them should be present to promote fertility and developmental health, as well as some other noteworthy foods that we'll mention later, especially some plant foods you guys might be curious about. Brief basics to keep in mind are that all of these animal foods and really Animal foods in general are super nutritious. They have water and fat soluble vitamins correlating to their protein and fat content, as well as feed quality. So what I'm emphasizing here is the nutrients these specific foods are amazing for, as opposed to listing every single nutrient. I'm also not talking about macronutrients carbs, fats, and proteins. And there are some standard Americans who aren't getting enough fat or protein in their diets, but those will come inherently if you're consuming these quality foods. Number five is eggs. And if there wasn't a quality concern with eggs, they would be much higher on this list. Since even pasture raised chickens get corn and soy feed, you know, it throws off the omega three to omega six ratio and since the omega-3 content of the mother's diet is super important for the brain development of the child, you know, having too much omega-6 can counter that, throw it off. Uh, that being said, eggs do have the preformed omega fatty acids. So if you have a good source that has that one-to-one -one ratio or even higher omega-3, maybe some backyard chickens or a reputable farmer, still a great option. They have large amounts of B vitamins, as with most animal foods, really being the only common animal source of B9 folate. Usually the conventional wisdom says, oh, eat these plant foods, they're high in folate, but there's differences between the animal and plant versions of vitamin B9, and you want the animal version. Eggs aren't super high in a bunch of different minerals, mainly iron, copper, zinc, and sulfur, but they're actually copper dominant, which is usually specific to ocean foods. So definitely something good for balancing your minerals if you're eating mostly land animals. And of course we have to mention cholesterol, which is crucial for many bodily functions and it takes the stress off your liver to produce that cholesterol. For number four, we have grass fed dairy, notably raw from a local farm. And there's quite a few dairy products you can incorporate into your diet and each has their own added bonuses or hypothetical downsides when comparing them to another dairy product. Anything that still contains the milk proteins, milk, cheese, yogurt, kefir, has a super high amount of B vitamins. Same with whey protein. Whey is basically concentrated B vitamins and the minerals that are present in milk amazing source of nutrition. 
cream and butter tend to be fat soluble vitamin heavy without as many minerals so for overall dietary balance you know it doesn't seem like these indigenous groups or our past ancestors were focusing on you know butter and cream as much as they were things like cheese and yogurt and milk in addition to many b vitamins dairy has several different forms of vitamin k2 which are higher in the fermented versions especially cheese super high in calcium which is great for balancing the high phosphorus content of a meat-based diet especially carnivore and it even has enough iodine to be a maintenance food for your source of iodine the only thing dairy is really missing is preformed omega fatty acids and high enough amounts of typically plant-based minerals uh, such as copper and magnesium the two things to really note with dairy are it's high in calories which is great for breast milk production and just having you know the fat protein and carbohydrate requirements meant for having that healthy child and it's very approachable most people like it most people enjoy it it tastes really good and you could argue that dairy should be much higher on this list but we have to keep accessibility in mind how much does the food cost does everyone have access to that really raw, high quality grass fed dairy? Does everyone tolerate it? Number three is fish eggs. And these would without a doubt be number one if there weren't pollution concerns with ocean food. That means that they're hard to access. You know, caviar, roe, truly is the best source of omega-3, but some seafood is so filled with toxins that you have to source the caviar, the roe, from cleaner oceans such as Alaska and that makes the accessibility much lower for some people. It's incredibly high in all the vitamins, both fat soluble, water soluble, and it's balanced. You know, it's not really favoring anything specific. It has adequate amounts of all the minerals, but most importantly, it is the highest and best source of preformed omega fatty acids, EPA and DHA. Just one or two tablespoons of this food per day will have more of an impact than any other food. And, and we see a common theme here that these super, super nutrient dense foods also have a lot of cholesterol, which again is crucial for all cells in the body, especially a developing baby. For number two, we have brains. And normally I wouldn't put a food like this on here as it can be hard to access and it's not exactly approachable from a culinary perspective, but since there is so much concern with pollution in seafood, brains are a guaranteed source of omega fatty acids, although I still consider the fish roe perfectly fine. Again, this is an option if you're paranoid and don't have a reliable source of omega-3 from ocean life. There's a reason that the elite make caviar so expensive and they fear monger about mad cow disease for animal brains. They don't want you getting that omega-3 in your diet and actually becoming smart, successful, and happy. Uh, if you have any concerns about that type of stuff, I have a video titled Raw Meat Safety. They are more fat-soluble vitamin focused, still just as high in omega-3 as the fish eggs, but slightly worse off from that water-soluble vitamin and mineral perspective. But again, one of the main priorities and needs of a prenatal pregnancy early childhood diet is to get lots of omega-3 and this does that exactly of course we can't forget the high cholesterol content and you know nature is telling us something when all of the most nutritious foods are incredibly high in cholesterol we need it in large amounts to be optimal human beings uh, so number one is simply meat muscle meat animal protein most people are incredibly deficient in B vitamins and minerals and just by eating one, one and a half pounds of quality animal protein per day, you would arguably have a pretty healthy child, especially compared to a standard American diet. Yeah, you might be lacking some minerals, some B vitamins, definitely some vitamin D3 and some K2, but in the context of the modern society, it's certainly a good step in the right direction has just about everything you need, especially cholesterol to fuel healthy tissue, just doesn't have high enough amounts of certain things. Uh, shellfish like oysters and mussels would definitely take over number one if we didn't have that ocean pollution concern. They're just so high in vitamins, minerals that you can't get from these foods like selenium, manganese, magnesium, and you could even argue that raw grass-fed dairy could be number one because of the the vitamin K2 and the gut health factor as 
that vitamin K is incredibly important for skeletal health, bone development, and if your gut isn't healthy from those probiotic foods like kefir and yogurt, you won't be producing the vitamins that your child needs to form tissue properly in the womb. So if you're able to piece together every single nutrient you need and understand that, uh, you would basically have what we call like D1 model babies. You know, there's a reason in those past indigenous groups, everyone kind of looked very similar, the same. They were all attractive, tall, very physically fit. It's because they all followed similar dietary principles. And I will do another video in depth. I'm not sure if I'm gonna do it on my Patreon, identifying the different categories of these vitamins, what foods you can and can't get them from, as well as what things you should probably supplement. Uh, so just to talk briefly on some uh, plant foods, we have chocolate, which is arguably the healthiest plant food just because it has so much magnesium and copper that you can't really get anywhere else despite some anti-nutrient concern. Uh, potatoes are also an excellent source of copper. I think they have some magnesium as well. And if you look at different nuts and grains, you can actually isolate minerals you might be deficient in, uh, such as selenium, manganese, molybdenum, boron, things that might have been deficient from a standard American diet that you just need in some reasonable amount uh, while you're pregnant. So thank you guys for joining me today. If you have any further questions, definitely check out my past pregnancy videos and also just watch a bunch of other educational videos on my channel. I do offer consultations via frank stefanocom if you want something basically laid out for you. Uh, so if you guys could please just leave a comment down below, uh, drop a like on the video, and let me know what you guys would like to see in the future. Uh, so I'll see you guys for tomorrow's video.